Hi there, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at times when your belay device failed. So this can happen in very specific circumstances and it mostly happens when you're working with two clients on a device or two followers on a device at the same time. So let's take a look at this first situation that I've set up. So I'm belaying two followers simultaneously on one device, which is pretty standard practice. And sometimes what can happen is while well, one climber is climbing, their rope can get pushed underneath the other climbers. If this climber here on this strand takes a fall, this strand comes under tension and makes it impossible for the climber on the green rope to have their rope bind up. So they will simply start sliding through the device. This is the way you belay, and this is the way it's supposed to lock up. You can see clearly that it's not locking on itself. So that's the first way you can end up with belay device failure. Now a simple solution for this is to make sure that your ropes stay parallel and if you're working with split roping technique, which is a common technique used for ice climbing, where you really don't want your climbers to be climbing next to each other because they can send ice down onto each other, especially if they're staggered one, another, one above the other, you want them separated, so that's called split rope. The simple thing you can do is have one locking draw clipped into a piece of protection about 10 to 20 feet down below the device that brings these ropes together. That's oftentimes called a gathering piece, and that will make it so now both of these ropes will lock in that direction. So make sure you never end up with ropes crossing over each other, or if that's unavoidable, you can always put backup knots in if you ever need to go hands-free while belaying, very essential in this situation. Okay, this next way of belay that a belay device can fail is probably the most common problem I see when people are belaying on auto blocking plates in a multi-pitch environment, especially when you're using a clone pitch to attach yourself at the anchor. So <laughs> I personally almost always use a rope with a clone pitch to attach myself at the anchor because it offers a durable, dynamic attachment that is significantly stronger in many respects, more comfortable and more adjustable than a personal anchor system. I'm using a personal anchor today just for clarity so you don't mix up my attachment with this next part. So as I belay my partner into this anchor, represented by this figure eight on a bite knot, I want to attach my partner to the anchor. So first I'm going to demonstrate the mistake and then I'll demonstrate the correct way. You'll see if we can find what the problem would be. So first I'm using a carabiner as a master point, which is totally fine. I place the carabiner in the master point. I clip my partner in and then I clip my partner in again. Lock them down. Here you can see I have a clove hitch, so they're attached to the anchor. And now I remove them from the device and they are on the anchor. Okay, that's method one. That's a one handed clove hitch. Here is method two. I belay my partner up close to the anchor. Give just enough slack to build the clove hitch in the air, so an air clove, and clip that clove hitch into the anchor and lock it down. So now you can see they're attached to the clove hitch. <coughs> so let's take a look back at the first method. When I clip my partner into the anchor initially, what I've done is potentially overridden this braking action of the device. I've redirected this brake strand, so if my partner should fall on this strand, 
my plate will no longer bite down on the rope. You can see they will just fall to their death, right? Or to their uh, injury. That is true whether there's a twist in this rope or whether there is no twist in that rope. Same thing applies. The device can no longer lock. So it's very important when you clip someone in and at the anchor from an auto blocking plate device that you do not use the one handed clove method, the twist, twist method. Okay? No. You should use the air clove method so that the device is never overridden. Clip it in quickly so both strands go in, it locks down, and you're good to go. Again, personal anchor is totally fine to use, but there are some systems where the personal anchor can overcomplicate transitions, or generally it just makes it less comfortable at belays, especially on long multi-pitch climbs or alpine climbs. So consider the air clove as a good alternative to attach your partner. Okay, the next belay device that I'm gonna talk about that can fail is the Grigri or any assisted braking style device. Almost all of them work in a very similar fashion. As long as they have two plates that cam against each other, you can have this failure. So in this case, I belay from the Grigri, and this is mostly a lead climbing situation where you'll have Grigri failure or this particular failure, where if the fall is strong enough, I might get pulled up and into my anchor in this multi-pitch station or in a single pitch environment, especially a difficult route that has a low first bolt, I might get pulled up into that first bolt. It can disengage the device. So in the event of a fall, the device locks up, and this cam engages, but you can see Without too much effort, even under load, if I press down with my thumb, it disengages that device. If my brake hand remains on the device throughout, more than likely it will just start to lower the person and then I can gain some control. But in a really ferocious fall, you may get jammed, your hand may get pinched, and it may be hard to main, con maintain control of the brake strand. And of course, without that lever action, happening in the assistant brake device, you no longer have a belay. So let's take a closer look at what can happen. Okay, you can see here, the leader has taken a big fall. I've gotten dragged up out of my multi-pitch anchor stance and I've hit the quick draw that was clipped to the anchor as the first piece of protection. This could also be the first quick draw on a bolt in a single pitch environment. And you can see that this quick draw hits this cam, and as the rope continues to pay out, it will no longer allow this Grigri to engage. So in the event that my hand gets sucked into the device and I let go, I no longer have any braking action. And the Grigri, unlike the ATC, when the cam is fully open, the amount of friction in the system is very small. So the likelihood that I get my hand dragged up and into the vise is pretty high. So one thing you can do to reduce this is in a single pitch environment, if there's a low first bolt, consider clipping the first bolt, clipping the second bolt, and then being belayed back down to the first bolt to unclip it. That way you're still protected at those difficult moves. But when the likelihood of a longer fall and therefore more force becomes greater, you don't have the first bolt to run into. In a multi-pitch environment, a good way to avoid this is to place an early good piece of protection. And if early protection isn't available, take a look at the direct belay, which we're not gonna cover here, but it's an advanced belay system that's very simple to use, simple to understand, and allows you to take all the force on the anchor, provided the anchor is unquestionably strong at one point.
So really good things to think about when playing with the Grigri. And as you can imagine, this same type of situation can happen with an ATC in the event your hand, your brake hand, gets jammed up into the system and you release the brake strand, you'll have the same problem. Okay, this next situation is also pretty common, especially if you're climbing in an alpine environment where you're climbing with thin ropes. So I'm belaying with an ATC guide and I've decided that I wanted to go light, so I have a half rope. Now the trouble is, ATC guide is used primarily for single ropes that are 8.7 millimeters in diameter and larger. This old half rope is 8.2 millimeters in diameter. And as long as I keep things in line, I can belay as normal and it should be pretty smooth. But if someone falls and weights the rope, what can happen is the rope can twist and pinch on itself within the device. So now, as long as that person stays loaded and I try to belay, even when they unweight the device, I still, pulling on the brake strand, cannot pull the rope up. In order to pull the rope up, I have to do a quick and abrupt pull in two opposite directions and continue. In the event you're using your device for rope ascent, this can be particularly problematic. And I've seen this happen many times, especially with the reverso. So keep in mind, try your device out with your intended rope well before you use it in an actual multi-pitch or alpine environment.